I own a foundation and uh, if you check me out on Google, you would see a lot of recognition as a change maker in Africa. How social media influenced your trading? I always tell my traders that there is a thing called the fleet mentality. The fleet mentality is a belief system that I can deposit a hundred dollars and take it to a million dollars. You have to trade for you to be a trader. I could take you to the ocean. I could show you how to fish, but you have to pass the net yourself. So that is very important. Why should you take the flip mentality away? What is the biggest trader's enemy? Or how to build a winning trading plan for 2024? You will find out in the interview with Daniel Jake, a successful trader from Nigeria. So stay tuned. Welcome to our interview. Thank you for having me. Uh, so excited to be here. For the second time. Uh, I'm, thank you very much for your time. Um, you have been trading with us for some time already. You, I'm sure that you have noticed that we have recently launched our customized challenges. Um, have you customized your challenge? Oh, uh, well, not yet. Uh, I should be making plans to customize um, to have a customized account in January. So uh, super excited for the changes, by the way, and be more for the fan. Yeah, I have to say that like over 90% of our customers, they customize their challenge. So uh, everyone is super excited about it. And, um, you know, tell me like, if you go to our website right now, and then if you look at our challenges right now, how would you customize it? What would you choose? Because you can, because you can change uh, uh, the payout duration, uh, uh, max drawdown, etc. So how would you customize your challenge? Well, I think for me, uh, and uh, personally, of course, uh, I'm more focused about the, the drawdown of a prop firm account. So if I was mm -hmm. to customize my personal um, trading account, I should be more interested in uh, increasing my uh, my maximum drawdown uh, because for me mm -hmm. that is um, really ready about as a trader so and that's literally what I'm working towards next year so uh, that's what I would be doing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most important factor for most of the traders when they are buying a challenge? What I think is the most important factor? Okay, now I think one of the most important factors uh, in terms of selecting a prop firm and trying to customize it will always be um, looking forward to capital protection um, because mm -hmm. we as traders were more oriented towards protecting our capital um, than the profit we're looking, uh, we're expecting to make from those trading accounts. So I would say um, one of the major areas you would see traders um, peak interest in would be um, the maximum drawdown of a prop account. And um, of course, the, the profit splits, the, um, the, the time allocated to um, payouts, they do also play a crucial role in terms of um, deciding what firm to use and what prop account size to, to pick as a trader. But I would say mm -hmm. overall, um, the basic um, most relevant part of uh, a prop account criteria should always be on the maximum drawdown because you want to preserve capital first. You want to be informed as to your maximum exposure on a set account before you can go ahead and pick that account. I recently came across a video of Kimmel and uh, um, Mamba, Mamba FX. So basically they are discussing um, signals, live signals. And I was just wondering what what do you think about buying signals, you know, live signals? What is your opinion on that? Have you ever, um, have you ever bought signals? Okay, um, well, you see, when it comes to um, running a signal service, um, uh, I've run uh, multiple um, services that does provide um, trade signal to traders. And I can tell you for a certain that um, it's not wrong to have a signal service. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, there are individuals that do not have the time or um, should I say the luxury to be on the chart every single time um, to, to take this trade. Mm -hmm. And because of the nature of their job, um, they need someone to guide them. They need someone to help them. So I would say, um, of course, signal services are great. Um, but then I, I feel like a lot of traders, they misinterpret um, uh, 
um, the, the relevance of a signal service. Uh, you see, a, a signal service isn't meant to make you a millionaire. I don't know why I keep telling traders this, but um, you have to always realize that um, the idea of providing signals is not to make you a millionaire. So the idea is um, mm. so you can make money and then make withdrawals, right? So don't try to have that mentality that the trades will always be a winner because you see um, the, the signal provider is a regular individual like you. So if you're expecting to win every single time, then it mm. just doesn't make sense. So. Um, overall, I'm not against people who provide um, signal services because I feel like it's doing a, a great advantage to um, individuals that don't have the capacity to be on their chart every single day. And trust me, a lot of people, when I started trading as well, I did follow people who had um, signal services. And I can tell you for a certain that I did benefit from all their trades. And at the same time, I also was providing signal services. And I can tell you a lot of people as well did benefit from all my trades. So it comes down to realizing what a signal service is there to do for you. And a lot of people just want you to win every single time. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, you're going to lose some, you're going to win. But at the end of the day, risk management is very important to every individual. Mm. So uh, I think that's my take. All right. All right. I've spoken to a couple of traders who uh, who were buying signals, but I have to say that all of them never made uh, some money. So just like I haven't tried myself, but I just uh, know what I have heard so far. So thank you for your intake. Let's move to another question. Uh, by the way, I love your Twitter. I love uh, most of the tweets, so I, I were going through them, uh, guys. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, seen uh, Daniel's uh, Twitter profile, so make sure that you follow him because I just love his uh, Twitter profile. And um, one of um, uh, one of your tweets you wrote, and I quote: "A trader's biggest enemy isn't the market, but rather their expectations." So tell us a little bit about it. Tell us about uh, the idea. Okay. Now, you, you see, a lot of time, uh, most people come into trading um, with the idea that they're going to be rich um, immediately they start trading. And, um, and most of this belief system was actually influenced by the lifestyle traders we see on the internet today. Um, the guys that are constantly um, flashing the, the lifestyle, the, the Lamborghini, the expensive vacations. So um, for an average individual, if you see the one-sided perspective that these guys are constantly putting on the internet, you may feel like um, trading is so easy. And then um, when you step into the market and then you start seeing that um, the reality isn't so much what is being preached on the internet. I can tell you, I've been in this industry for a longer time and the level mm -hmm. of misinformation is so, so crazy. A lot of people are, they would rather show you the wins rather than show you their losses. A lot of people get excited to take that screenshot whenever they have a win. Uh, to post it on the internet, but then when they start taking losses, you never hear from these guys again. So um, to their mm -hmm. followers, to their fans, not realizing that these guys, not just focusing on the wins, these guys also um, do take losses, but they just don't show it on the internet. They may see the one-sided perspective and just believe that um, all they need to do is Take this, um, take their small trading accounts, um, fund with a broker, and then start making money. But you see, mm -hmm. just like me, I also had this belief system, and that's the reason why I feel like a lot of traders um, do think this well this way as well. Because you see, when I started trading, I thought I was gonna, um, I thought I was gonna be very rich in like a couple of days. But then when I stepped <laughs> in, I got to realize that you see. This is a random market. This is a game of probability. And in a game of probability, you're always going to take a loss. So when I started seeing this, there was a there was a phase I, um, there was a time where I decided that I was going to unlearn a lot of things and then relearn again because I believe that I stepped into this market with the wrong belief system. And um, that's the reason why I made that tweet. I always tell people, when you step into this market, the market itself, the environment would reprogram program your belief system and trust me if you thought you're going to be rich in less than um in less than few days then you will see the reality now i'm not telling you other traders haven't 
um, done this, I can tell you there are traders that step into this space and in less than two months, they are way successful. But for the average trader, yeah. we you call it have beginner's to calm yourself. luck, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you don't see this thing every single time. So when I keep telling traders, yeah. your expectation, you need to keep your expectations aside. If you want to be a professional trader, take those expectations, right? Rather than focus more on the outcome of a trade, start focusing on the process. So let your expectations be outside the market and trade the market for what it is. Because you see, the reality of a live market environment is way different from your imagination. And that for me is very important. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if we talk about realistic uh, profit, what is the realistic profit for traders that just started? Okay. Now, you see, in terms of realistic profit, we really can't point out, um, let's say, a, a figure or, or a percentage because, you see, the market is not constant, right? Um, there are months where mm. you, you may close the month at 17% in profit. There are other months where you would close 50% in profit, 10% in profit. And there are other months where you might likely close in um, in drawdown, right? So we really can have a fixed figure to this thing. But what I keep telling traders, mm. if you're new to the trading market, the, the, the trading industry, what you need to start doing is focus on consistent growth. So even if it's just 1% every month, 2% every month, mm -hmm. be consistently profitable before you can start flipping accounts. You see, I always tell my traders that there is a thing called the flip mentality. The flip mentality is a belief system that I can deposit $100 and take it to a million dollars. Now, these are possible um, outcomes, but then it's not consistent over the long term. So what we need to start doing is we need to take out the flip mentality and focus on consistent growth as individuals. And trust me, if you step into this industry for the first time, your aim is to make, I, I made a tweet a time ago and I said something that if you can make $1 in this market consistently, you are above the 90% of traders that are more successful. Because making money from the market and becoming consistently profitable are two different things. So what I can say yeah. in terms of uh, an average expectancy when it comes to the profit a trader can make, I would say um, personally, there is no fixed uh, profit you can make because um, I might be talking from a, a $10,000 perspective and um, another trader might have a $100. So, but then if you can focus on just making 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% in a month, trust me, it will take out a lot of pressure and you will be above the 90% that are not successful. Yeah. You also mentioned uh, flipping mentality. How realistic is it to flip account? Because you can see so many uh, videos on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, how easy it is to flip, to flip an account. So how easy is it and okay. how realistic is it? Okay, now you see, when it comes to flipping account, now this is the most craziest thing. It's, it's possible. <laughs> I'm not telling traders that, I never tell traders it's impossible to flip an account. It is possible, but then things like this aren't consistent, right? You could, mm. it's like winning the lottery. You could step into a, a, a betting shop and decide that you want to place a bet. And at the end of it, you take a win. But then doing that thing over and over and over again, that is what we call consistency. So the question here is, how many times would you take a hundred dollar to a million dollar or ten thousand dollars consistently over a long period of time so what mm. i'm saying is uh, a lot of time these results these content is literally influencing a lot of traders and it's one of the major mm. reasons why traders are not successful trust me i've seen tr a trader that did have a, a, a walking strategy, this strategy could give him five to 10% every month, but he didn't feel satisfied because to him, he wanted to flip accounts. He believed in the idea mm. that if I have a hundred dollar, I should be able to take it to a thousand dollars in few days or in few months. And then I have to say to him, this is how you look at a trading account. You have a hundred dollars. Don't focus on the equity size. Don't focus on, oh, I have a hundred dollars. I have two hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Focus on percentage growth. Now, if you focus on percentage mm. growth, that is when you would see that making 
Taking a hundred dollar to a thousand dollars is like making a thousand. I don't know. I think it's a thousand uh, percentage increase on that account, or probably ten times increase on that account. But then you need to always realize that if you have hundred percent equity, the aim is to make ten percent, five percent. Now, in five percent is too small for you. Trust me. The problem is not the strategy. The problem is not the market. The problem is your equity as a trader. Because you see. We can, I think I've always talked about this all the time, right? We can both take a trade, right? We could take the same trade. At the end of the day, we all made 5%. Now, I could have a $100 trading account, and you, on the other hand, you have a $100,000 trading account. Now, 5% to you is $5,000. 5% to me, it on my $100 trading account is $5. So you can see that the difference now, the problem is not the market. The problem is not the strategy. The problem is the funding size. So more often, mm. trying to flip account, I'm not telling you it's not possible, but if you're a beginner trader, we should always focus on consistency over trying to just rush the process. Yeah, nicely said. What about you? Have you ever flipped your account? Yes, I have. Uh, I have multiple times, and it's on my Telegram channel uh, as well for anyone who wants to check them. I have flipped accounts uh, multiple times. I think um, the, the last flip I did was a $2,000 to $12,000, and uh, it, it's possible. Now, this is what I keep telling traders. I'm not telling you flipping account is not possible. It is possible, but it's not consistent, right? You see, Mm -hmm. uh, an account that actually gets flipped are those accounts where you don't have emotions attached to them. You just be like, oh, I have a thousand dollars. Let me just see what I can do with this account. Now, those are the accounts that do get flipped. The ones where you're trying to manage your emotions around, you're trying to, um, oh, I don't want to lose this money, and then you want to flip it, those are the trading accounts that you will eventually um, lose in the long run. So yes, I have flipped account multiple times, multiple times, but I don't do it consistently. Mm. When you flipped your account, what about your ego? Yeah, of course. Did the, you, did you ego, become you, super you, confident? Of course. You, you will get confident <laughs> whenever you um, flip account. And that's the thing, right? That's the thing. When you flip an account, I'm talking from experience right now. When you flip an account, <laughs> we draw the profit. We draw the profit because you see, you will draw over confidence and feel like, yo, I think I figured out the market. And just one decision, <laughs> just one wrong move would blow your entire account. So yes, whenever I flip account, I feel like a superhero, but then in the long term, you want to chill, flip the account and make that withdrawal because those things are not consistent. You're going to take the loss and you may lose the account eventually. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What did you buy uh, with your money from trading? Okay, now I've got a lot of things with my uh, my trading capital. What, are, what was the best thing? Uh, let me see. I I think at the point, one of the best things to me is influencing others. And um, I, I before becoming a professional trader, I own a foundation. And uh, if you check me out on Google, you would see a lot of recognition as a change maker in Africa. So um, I own mm -hmm. a foundation that does provide um, vocational skills training and free education to um, out of school children living in slum communities. So most of my oh. profits does go to running my foundation because it takes a lot of um, financial capacity to sponsor these kids, to ensure they are in school, to um, to provide for them essentially. So I would say that is the best way I spend my money, um, giving to others and seeing that everyone is happy. But in terms of personal things, I've gone on vacations, I've bought a lot of things, I own a car, I have my apartment, I could travel when I feel like. And to me, I feel like that is success. Um, I don't own a Lamborghini yet, but to me, I'm successful because I'm not just influencing um, my close relatives, but I'm also making the lives of other people better as well. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, by the way, I love your Twitter spaces. I love your talks. Um, I have uh, uh, seen some other tweet that I really, really liked. So I will quote it. Sure. One thing about trading is that you really can't figure it out at once. Perfection isn't a level you attain from reading or watching materials. 
perfection in trading often comes from experience. How long, how long do you think it takes to become a profitable, skilled trader? Okay, um, now you see, we, we really can arrive as traders we're constantly learning. And uh, the reason why I made that tweet is because, uh, you see, more often we have to realize that, um, I always make this reference, trading is like driving a vehicle, right? Or, um, let's say taking a swimming class or um, um, going fishing or something. Um, it's an experienced game. You, you can't be a profitable trader um, just from reading content, watching other people trade. Um, you know, in as much as you can learn from these things, uh, you have to be in the market to become a successful trader. Mm -hmm. You need to trade to become successful. It's like attending the best driving school in the world. If you don't drive a car, personally, you would never become a driver, right? So yeah. you, you could list it, you could take all the classes you want, you could um, you could pay for all the sessions, get the best driver in the world, or maybe get one of the crews from Fast and Furious, but then if you don't sit on that vehicle yourself, you wouldn't know how to drive. And that is the same thing with trading. You could take all the courses, you could meet all the mentors, take all the live streams you mm. can find, but if you don't sit and trade for yourself, there are certain things that you may never get to know or never get to experience first on. So, but when it comes to um, how long it, it, it will take a trader to become successful, I really can't pin out a, a certain duration because I believe that we have different people and different capacities. I've seen traders that became successful in less than five months. I've seen traders that it took them over five years to become successful as individual. But I can tell you, you need at least two years of experience in this industry mm -hmm. to have um, you should, to have, let's say, uh, um, how would I even put this? Um, you need at least two years of experience to come into this level where you know what you're doing. You may not be prof mm. uh, profitable yet, but you would have some set sense of, um, I, I know what I'm doing at this point because um, at this time, you've gone through the basics, you've met a lot of people, you've seen a lot of content, you've been trading for a longer time, you know how to use the interface, um, you're very familiar with a lot of things called sleep page. So these things aren't so new to you again. So I would say overall, you need a, at least two years to get to that level where you're consistently comfortable um, being in mm. the trading industry. But I really can tell you how many years it will um, take for you to be a successful trader. But what I can say for a certain is trading is an experience game. You can't become a successful trader just by watching someone or um, listening to, um, taking seminars or getting books. You have to trade for you to be a trader. I could take you to the ocean. I could show you how to fish, but you have to pass the net yourself. So that is very important. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Once I had a friend and he was traveling through uh, reading books. I was like, I was like, how can you like, you know, if you don't visit the country yourself, you will have never the kind of feelings and experience, right? And he was of like, course. no, 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 I'm fine with traveling through my books. And I think it's, it's similar, right? So of course, of if course. you want to learn trading, you have to trade, you have to do that's it just yourself. the best way. Daniel, since uh, 2023 is uh, coming to an end, um, tell me, how do you analyze your trading performance? Okay, now for me, I focus more on uh, my monthly return. So I do weigh the success of my trading over a monthly performance. So um, let's say mm. I would never evaluate my trades before the end of the month because I believe that a lot of things can affect your uh, the market condition within a month period. So I really can tell if my system is fading away or my system is still profitable. So the best thing to do mm. is you want to keep yourself in a position where you're giving your system, your strategy enough time time um, for it to perform. And I feel like weighing progress over a month period is um, way better than doing this um, over um, everyday performance and every week performance. But what I do is at the end of the month, I want to see, I have my journal, I want to see um, how well did I perform this month? Uh, was this month um, terrible? Um, what are the mistakes I did this month? How can I um, correct them? Uh, and um, yeah, I feel overall, um, this is how I um, I check my growth. And I can tell you for a certain that 
um, if there's one thing I know for um, for sure that I did this this year would be consistent growth because um, I mean the call would not just go all the way up, but then I saw myself moving this way or eventually um, accelerating to the upside. So um, yeah, for me, it's been an amazing year. 2023 was one of the best years. Uh, the year where I literally um, led a lot of things from um, the market and a lot of connections were built. And then um, 2024, of course, it's a whole new level. Looking forward to more exploits and more adventures. Yeah. So uh, if you look at uh, your entire trading year, what were the most profitable months? Can you okay. see? Can you see some? You know that you would say that like uh, the spring months are more profitable than the summer months, or the the way around. Yeah, well, you see, the thing is, uh, this is actually general psychology. Uh, we understand around Q1, the market is just starting for the year, so we expect the market to have, mm -hmm. uh, should I say, weak. Um, um, weak um, volume, or should I say, let a lower volume, right? And um, this usually mm -hmm. happens around January. Um, then February, we begin to see um, the market with peak momentum. And uh, for me, this year, I started seeing um, uh, my profits were around um, March, April, May, June, July. Um, these are the peak moments of the year. And as we approach um, August, mm -hmm. September, November, we know that the companies, the institutions all across the world, uh, at this time, these guys are wrapping up for the year. Um, when we step into November, we're gonna see less activities in December, less activities as well, because um, we see mm -hmm. at this time, no one is pumping more volume into the market. A lot of people are wrapping up reports for the year. Uh, if you work for a hedge fund around December, you're giving annual reports, you want to submit, this was how I performed this year. So um, ideally, you're not doing so much within this period. So um, like I said, it's a global psychological thing. Um, where you realize that um, mm. the, the peak moments are around February, um, February all the way to like September, October, but then um, towards November, December, January, we we'll begin to see uh, weaker uh, um, um, volumes in the market. Mm. And then those are the times where the mm. market are usually slow. Those are the times where you don't see lots of activities, lots of um, spikes to the upside, except if we have fundamentals. So yeah, overall, I had my best months this, um, this year was March, April, um, March, April, May, June, July. Um, in August, I really didn't trade. Uh, and I think August this year, and this is something I always do, um, whenever I'm done trading for the months, I tend to just get, um, talk to other traders. So how was your month? And I can tell you, August this year, for everyone that really did trade um, this year, August was one of the most craziest months and uh, uh, a lot of drawdown. I spoke with a lot of profitable traders, big guys in the industry, and they also had, um, they experienced this drawdown. I never did. Uh, I think I closed the month of um, mm. August, uh, I think 8% in profit. And um, well, so it just goes on and on. Like I said, it's a global psychological thing, but my most profitable mm. months always come at the end of Q1 rush down to like August, September, uh, August, September. And then uh, from then we begin to see crazy uh, and weaker moves in the market. What about December? Are you still trading or are you already in your uh, holiday mood? Well, uh, I stopped trading um, last week. Uh, I stopped trading all my proper accounts from um, last week. I don't think this last week. Um, I know I have a payout um, that should be coming in from um, your firm. And I also have payouts from other firms as well. And um, all of these accounts, I said that I'm not going to trade. Now, usually I wouldn't trade in December. Um, because of what happened um, with my family, I wouldn't want to share um, for um, confidentiality sake. Um, but then I had a lot of things and had a lot of expenses that I needed funds for. And that was the reason why I did trade this month because uh, for me, all my Decembers are for vacation, right? I need to chill, I need to calm myself. I need to be ready for um, mm. the next year. So I usually wouldn't trade in December, but I did trade this month and uh, I stopped trading last week uh, because I know that this week and next week are um, proper holidays and these are all global holidays. So you rarely would see significant movements um, while trading. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You also mentioned that uh, you have learned so much from the market this year. What was the most important thing uh, you have learned? Okay, now one of the most important thing I learned this year, and um, I think the most relevant for me is realizing, not just realizing that this is a game of probability, but accepting that this is a game of probability. You see, it's one thing mm. to know that it's a game of probability. It's another thing entirely to accept it and fully work with that belief system. Now, over the years, I knew it's a game of probability, but then whenever I take a loss, I have lots of emotions uh, attached to it. I feel bad. I may have a terrible day um, because I took a loss. But um, this year, I, I saw myself trading and I was treating every trade as just a trade. I mean, it's just a trade. At the end of the day, I'll either win mm. or I'll either lose. But then in the long run, I will still be successful as a trader. So um, this year, it's realizing that becoming co consistently profitable is one of the most boring part of trading. It's not exciting. You're going <laughs> to have lots of losses. You're going to take losses along the line. But then focus on the long term. The idea is I started focusing on the long term. Like I said earlier on, I was um, checking my performance at the end of every month. So even if I'm having a terrible week or a terrible day, I don't call it a terrible month yet until the end of the month. And usually I get to see mm -hmm. that I may have a drawdown this week, but next week would cover not just for the previous drawdown, but would also push me up in profit. And um, yeah, I think the main thing I did then this year is accepting that this really is a game of ability. Okay, okay. Uh, with new year, uh, there is always new strategy and new, new plans. Tell me how to build a winning trading plan for 2024. Can you walk us through it? Can you give us some step-by-step -step process how to build a 2024 winning trading plan? Sure. Yo, you see, when it comes to building goals and um, having a plan, the most relevant thing is envisioning what you want to do and where you want to see yourself mm. in the next couple of months, right? So you need to first of all have a mental picture of the future. So you're saying to yourself, if um, in the year 2024, I want to get, um, I want to buy a house or I want to buy a car or I want to go on this vacation or I want to pay for this professional cost. So you need to have a goal and say to yourself, okay, this is my goal. At the end of 2024, I want to make $20,000 at the end of 2024. So the next thing you need to do is you need to break down this goal into every month. So now you're creating a milestone. You're saying to yourself that, and this is how I actually set my goals. I always have a checklist, right? I create a list and a tax, um, a list of all the things I want to do for the year. Um, they may not be so mm -hmm. detailed, but they all have a time frame. So if I say to myself, in the first quarter, I want to get a new car. Now, if that is my aim for that quarter, all my energies are actually channeled towards um, getting a new car for the first quarter. And the thing mm -hmm. I try as much as possible to do is I always set a deadline. Now, you see, a lot of people, they make this mistake. When you have a goal, set a deadline to that goal. Now, setting a deadline literally would place a mental pressure on you knowing fully mm. well that time where you want to just feel lazy or probably you want to procrastinate, when you remember that you have a deadline to this goal, it will change a lot for you as a person, right? So to me, how to set a goal is quite simple. Have a mental picture on what you want. If you want to make $10,000 by the end of 2024, if you want to make $50,000 or $100,000, then break it down to how much you will be making every month. So if you say to yourself, okay, uh, if I want to make, let's say, $12,000 by the end of 2024, then uh, it means that every month I should be making $1,000 every month. Now, if you have this, mm -hmm. you then have to break it down to, now, if you're a trader, the best thing to do is you ask yourself, okay, 
um, $1,000 divide by 20 trading days in a the month, then you have the figure you're supposed to be making every single day. And then you need to make up for the compromise because there are days mm -hmm. where you're not going to win. So if you're doing a thousand dollar divide by 20 trading days, now what I always do is I always calculate the worst case scenario. Now in a month, I may not win every single day. I mean, I'm not that good. Well, not that good. We can't win every single time, right? So realizing that, okay, if we have 20 trading days in a month, I'm going to take certain losses, right? But this is what I want to do. If I place myself in the worst case scenario, say I win just 10 days or maybe 11 days or 15 out of um, 20 trading days, I should still hit my goal at the end of the month, right? So the first thing to creating a goal for the year is have a vision of what you want, then break that vision into mm. your monthly targets and set a deadline to everything you're doing. Because if you keep a vision open-minded, you may never um, achieve these goals. And one thing that is very relevant as well is write the vision and make it plain. That is very important. Always write the vision because when you write things down, you're always going to remember that these things are really important. Daniel. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure having you on the show. And um, all the best to you and to your family. I hope that your mom will get uh, much better. And I guess we will see each other in Prague maybe in a couple of weeks. Sure, sure. Thank you so much for having me. And it's always a joy speaking with you. And always my pleasure working with the firm. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, if you like our interview, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And if you have any thoughts, just write down them in the comments below. Thank you and see you next time.